Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. That rarefied air of heaven, I love breathing it in and breathing it out. We spend a third of our life sleeping. What if that third of your life was actually arranged by God to have you in a total seeing state in your dreams, and he wants to tell you what decisions you should make, yes or no, what direction you should have, wisdom for friends in your dreams. My guest totally demystifies understanding dreams. She teaches how to remember your dreams and how to understand them, and one third of your life will not be wasted on pizza dreams. You will know the truth through your dreams. I, I have to tell you, I'm a pretty pragmatic person. And therefore, I, I have my dreams. I've had literal dreams, but only a few. I can number them on one hand. However, they're all symbolic, and uh, I never can know exactly what they are. So being the type of person I am, I've tossed them all out. Uh, Laura, why doesn't God just make it easy and give us literal dreams? You know what? You're right. A lot of times he does. Uh, but, you know, Jesus spoke in parables and he is still speaking in parables today. But mainly I say, the reason he does this is because you have to apply your faith. When he shows you something, then it requires you to seek him. It requires you to pray and to come up with an interpretation or go to someone who interprets, and then you have to apply your faith to it, and that's pleasing to the Lord. Well, you know what? You said the key operative word. It's pleasing to the Lord to apply our faith. So. I was, a, it's a Hebrew phrase, a bisomashuga, a little crazy for tossing out, God giving me direction. I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> and you told me something last night that I've been thinking about ever since, Laura, and that is you have gotten up at night or opened your eyes and seen someone protecting you right in your bedroom. Tell me about that. Yes, uh, I have seen someone at twice at the foot of my bed and once over to my right where uh, just reaching over me uh, to touch me like this. And I had seen angels in the past, but it was through bright bursts of light or uh, in other ways over, over people around, uh, you know, in a situation where protection was needed. But this was just a man. And I'm telling you, he was there as if you're there right now, just guarding over me. Uh, but now I you're also, provoking me to jealousy. <laughs> I, I want no. that angel over my bed. How about you? You know what? I pray often for people to receive that. I don't want mine leaving my bed, but I want the Lord to send someone to uh. theirs because I believe it also uh, can give us sweet sleep. God says in Psalm 127 too that He gives His beloved sleep. But it's, it's not sometimes so automatic. You say, well, I'm not sleeping. I'm His beloved. But you know, there is a war going on for that third of our day. The enemy wants us riddled with sleep debt, apneas, insomnia. He wants all of that so that we don't rest, so, though, so that we don't have an opportunity to hear from God at that time of day like we can. How did you 
get into this understanding <laughs> dreams? I mean, because you have become so expert at it. How to, what, what was the nucleus of it to start? <laughs> Okay, well, I'll tell you, uh, 20 years ago, I was teaching classes on hearing the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And I began to notice that people were less comfortable saying, I had a word from the Lord, or I have a, a prophecy for you, than they were, I had a dream last night. Let me tell you what I think it means, or what do you think it means? And so I began to just begin teaching, uh, you know, and exploring scripture on what dreams say, that's really where it started. And then I changed the name of the classes to seeing the voice of God. So what happened to me personally during that time, and this was about 15 years ago, I was still teaching the hearing classes. I went through this hearing drought, as I call it. I was spiritually deaf. My husband had just walked away from a lucrative music industry job. And we had five children at the time. And it was, and had a, a sixth one in the interim. And so it was a really time, well, we had to hear the Lord on our next step. And I wasn't hearing anything. And then one night, I finally heard this small phrase, and it was five days. I thought, what does five days have to do with anything? And the Lord downloaded it into me all at once, and I do mean all at once. You're going to get away with me for five days, and you're going to read the Bible in five days. And I'm going to let you ask me that question. Is God ever silent? Because I was mourning, I was hearing and seeing these books on Christian bookstore shelves that when God is silent. And I just, I couldn't bring myself to the point where I, you know, thought my God was silent, like he had a mute button. I just did not think he would do that. So the Lord provided a way at my father's prayer cabin and I went and in five days with a, a very strict reading schedule, it was just, you know, 12 to 15 hours a day. Um, I read the entire Bible. I didn't stop to chew on the Greek or Hebrew or anything sure. like that. Just ask that one question. And Sid, I did not find one place in Scripture where it says that God is silent. I found Scriptures like, if I regard iniquity in my heart, you will not hear me. But coming to that conclusion, I thought, okay, then it's, it's not God's mouth. It's my ears. And that's where Job 33 came into play for me. God began to bypass my ears and pour out visions and dreams. And Job 33 says, um, God speaks in one way and in another, yet man does not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering in their beds, then he opens the ears of men. So the visions and the dreams started coming and during this time, we changed the name of the classes to seeing the voice of God and voila, suddenly my ears were opened again. I love that. There is hearing the voice of God, <laughs> but you're going to start not just hearing, you're going to start seeing the voice of God. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Is it possible that God designed sleep so that we would be a totally captive audience to hear His voice. Laura Harris-Smith shows you how to unlock the answers so you can solve life's most pressing issues, even while you're sleeping, through your dreams and visions. Call now and get Laura Harris-Smith's powerful book, Seeing the Voice of God, and her empowering DVD, 10 Frequently Asked Questions on Dreams and Visions, plus a revealing three-part audio CD teaching 2020 hearing. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9234. Through Laura's book and three part audio CD teaching, you will learn how to hear God with your ears by day and your eyes at night. Discover an easy to understand six step process for clearly seeing and hearing God's voice in your dreams and visions. Learn how to understand your prophetic dreams by properly discerning the symbols by scanning Laura's dream dictionary, which includes over 1000 symbols and their meanings. At the end of every chapter of her book, there are prayers of impartation to help release in your spirit the things you are learning. Through her two-part DVD, Laura provides answers to the top 10 frequently asked questions on the topic of dreams and visions. Some of the questions include, how do you know if a dream is from God? How can you be sure your dream interpretation is right? How can you increase having dreams? Don't miss out on getting Laura Harris-Smith's powerful book, Seeing the Voice of God, and her empowering DVD, 10 Frequently Asked Questions on Dreams and Visions. 
decisions, plus a revealing three-part audio CD teaching 2020 hearing. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9234. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9234 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, my guest tells me she gets angry because it's the devil that is causing insomnia to stop God's people from hearing God, seeing God so clearly in their dreams. Insomnia is a big problem. It is, and it's not just God's people that the enemy doesn't want sleeping. Remember, Jesus can reveal himself to people, and this is happening a lot in Muslim nations right now. He can reveal himself to people uh, in their sleep. So, you know, be comforted by that, that family member that you have that thinks they're an atheist by day or they uh, think they're an agnostic by day. We are made of three parts in God's image, and so there's that portion of us that does not sleep, just like there's that portion of God that does not sleep. Our body and our mind sleep at night, but our spirit is awake. And so that person who says by day, I'm agnostic. Right. Listen, they go to bed at night and their spirit is the Lord. So the enemy doesn't want them sleeping either. Uh, insomnia and other sleep disorders, riddles. No, but what, what, what Laura told me, and this is so <laughs> exciting, is when she has friends that are non-believers, agnostics, atheists, another religion, She's got a captive audience to pray for them while they're <laughs> sleeping because the Bible says that God neither slumbers nor sleeps and the human spirit neither slumbers right. nor sleeps. Right. But tell me a bit about what you learned about insomnia. Yeah, well, there's 40 million uh, people in the world who struggle with insomnia. Uh, chronically, 20, another 20 million who just have it periodically. There's always mm -hmm. times for each of us when maybe we can't sleep. Um, but yes, I believe it is an attack of the enemy to come against that period of the day. Listen, the moon and the stars and the nighttime, those were not an afterthought when the Lord created those. That is a sacred time. And it is a time for you to be able to receive information from the Lord when your busy mind uh, is turned off. And I sat next to, on a plane one time, um, a person who was really into Sigmund Freud, okay? And they had a lot of psychologists in their family. And, you know, Freud was Jewish by birth, an atheist by choice. Unfortunately. Right. <laughs> but his, can you imagine having those roots and ignoring them? But his whole take on dreams was that it was all psychological. I'm like, oh, you're, it's so much more than that. We can receive in our spirit from the Lord as we sleep. So yes, the enemy does not want us to sleep. And uh, that's the place where I get excited about praying for people. Now, you actually had a dream before my staff called you that <laughs> told you what was going to happen. I'm so thankful. I woke up one morning, uh, so it was a waking dream. And yes, there was a dream and I, I saw a... Excuse me, what is a waking dream? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you wake up Just as you're to waiting. this dream. Yes, it can be in the middle of the night if that dream wakes you up. I see. But this one was in the morning and I saw a hand and it was knocking on a door. And it wasn't my hand. It was a hand knocking on my door. And that was it. And I heard opportunity knocks. So I waited. Well, the morning before that, I had had a dream that I was big and pregnant. Okay, so I've had six children, so that you was understand. an analogy, right, that the Lord knew I would understand. I was expectant, you know, you're expecting when you're, when you're pregnant. So I put those two together in my mind and I thought, something big is about to knock at my door. I'm full and here comes the opportunity for, you know, delivery. And hours later, we got the, the uh, email from your executive producer. Uh, you know, that is exciting to have this knowledge before it happens that it really is God knocking at your door. But also you can have what is, you explain, warning dreams. Mm. Explain a mm. little bit more. Well, can I give you an example of one? Please. Because it's sort of self-explanatory, but I, I love this example. It was a warning waking dream. And mm -hmm. waking dreams, you just have a hard time shaking. I woke up one morning, it was a Sunday morning, and I saw myself uh, standing in front of my church. My husband and I pastor a church uh, in Nashville, Eastgate. 
and there was a huge wrecking ball and it was coming towards the church. Now I'm standing in between, you know, it, so I see it coming at me and I woke up and I knew there was That's immediate danger. Scary. Oh, it was, it was, not just because I saw it coming against my church, but it was staring me in the face at a rapid speed. And so I got up, I got out of bed. I knew that the early morning prayer team, the pre-service uh, intercessors would be there praying. And so I must have barged in there like a bull in a china closet. I gathered every elder I could find. I gathered every pastor, the music pastors, everybody. And I said, listen, there is something that is about to happen. I'm not sure, but if we'll pray with this, I believe we can thwart it. So sure enough, that week, we had two of our key families, uh, a feud broke out between them that could have been really divisive. It could have split the church. But because we had already been praying, we had fondued to the whole situation <laughs> in prayer. We had gotten prepared to clear our schedules if need be. And we did, we had some mediation meetings. And you know, love won, prayer won. They if, stayed. If you had not had that exactly. warning dream, what would have happened? Exactly. Well. Who knows? I mean, the enemy is, he was after more than just our family. He was after our church. These were two very key families. And so, you know, I, I say it's like uh, those DVDs that you can watch. You have the, the alternate ending. You can choose which ending you want. Right. <laughs> that to me is what a warning dream is about. It's not fate. It's not set in stone. Many people mistake them for nightmares because what they actually are is their information, like intelligence being given to you by God to pray and change a situation. You know, a lot of people miss that. They see a warning dream and they say, oh no, something awful right. is going to happen. Oh no, you're to pray so something awful <laughs> doesn't happen. Well, Laura, you researched 1,000 mm. uh, symbols, if you will, from the Bible. Uh, and when you, when you did this, what did you find as far as opening your understanding of your dreams? Mm, it was so important. It was difficult to write a dictionary. I wasn't quite sure what I was, you know, uh, biting off at first. But I did it because I wanted people to be able to understand what they were dreaming and not to just rely on, oh my goodness, the secular websites that are out there or new age uh, interpreting books on, on symbols. I went to a, a, a secular website one time and dreamed that, or saw that if you dream about biscuits, it said, you're a woman who's ambitious in your career. And I was like, what does that have to do with anything? Oh, uh, yeah, toss <laughs> that stuff out. I like the biblical understanding. <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you what, when we come back, I'm going to have Laura pray for you. She's prayed for people with insomnia that have been able to sleep. She's prayed for people that don't remember their dreams. They start remembering their dreams. I'm gonna have her pray whatever the Spirit of God wants her to. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. My passion is for you to walk in divine health 24-7. That's why I handpicked my favorite healing scriptures from many translations of the Bible, personalized them for you, and made them available in this free ebook. I want you to meditate or pray out loud these scriptures over your life daily and witness the supernatural healing power of God's kingdom come upon you. Download your free healing scriptures ebook now. We now return to it's supernatural. Uh, Laura, since you've been researching dreams, I'm sure many people have asked you questions. Mm -hmm. Tell me two of the questions most people ask you. Yeah. Well, I think the number one question I get asked is, why don't I ever dream? And my answer to that is that it is scientifically proven. I've researched it. You have between four and six dream REM cycles, rapid eye movement cycles each night. And then you have in those, each of those, between four and six dreams. So you're having it's scientifically proven between 16 and 36 dreams each and every night. So if you live to be 75 years old, uh, that's almost a million dreams. But wait a second, if you're having a million dreams, right. How come someone can say, I never dream? <laughs> it's because they're not remembering their dreams. So there are uh, things that you can do. There's nutritional issues that need to be addressed. And I, I often have people ask me, well, can't God override all of that? Mm -hmm. Do I really have to 
nourish my body and my brain and make sure that I'm able to, you know, have better recall? And my answer is absolutely. God can override anything. But see, the issue isn't just that God wants to communicate with you during times of conflict. He wants to be able to reach you anytime. And ultimately, He wants you to sleep. So that is the question I get asked the most. Why am I not dreaming? But I would say the number two question I get asked is, why do I only dream pizza dreams? Why, why do I just have a... I can picture that. That's what probably, <laughs> I have an idea you're asking. How come I just have pizza dreams? Just talk to me literally. Uh, I, I've said that so many times. The Lord <laughs> convicted me earlier in the show. Uh, without faith, you can't please God. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the thing that's so overwhelming to me, Laura, mm. is that once you start moving in faith on your dreams, you started mm. hearing God oh, better. It's like... It doesn't take grandiose faith either. It's childlike faith. And so... You so what happens to people that say, not only I don't dream, but I don't hear God? Yeah. What, what yeah. would you say? What's the reason? Well, there are many reasons for that static. It's as if we're on a different radio frequency with God. Right. And I say there are many things that cause us to get off the right channel. We have to get back on the right channel. And, and then that static... Uh, it, clouds are, are hearing, if, if I can say it that way. And so I, uh, I teach about that static and the things that prevent us from hearing God. And just really quickly, they are sin. That's a biggie. That would be the S uh, because sin disfellowships us from God. Sure. Time, our busy schedules. A, ambivalence. We're not sure. Oh, was that God? I'm not certain. And you waver and you never think anything. You know, you pray to hear him and then you can't take yes for an answer. Uh, the other T would be trials. Sometimes we sit with God with our grocery list. When we're finally still, we just run down our list of everything that we need and they eclipse our entire visit with Him. I is illiteracy. We have an illiterate church who does not know how to read the Word of God. And how can you stand on the promises unless you know what they are? Uh, and then C would be the competing voices. Now this is I always say there are at least five voices in your head at any given time. Uh, there's your flesh voice. There's your reasoning voice, you know, that tries to reason its way out of everything. There's your conscience, which we're all born with, knowing, you know, right or wrong. Um, there's Satan's voice. And then there's how God's you, voice. How do you know the difference with all these voices? Well, you know, scripturally, you can look at, at each of those and you can see how th that they compete with one another. The one that people get tripped up over the most is not my voice or my flesh. You kind of know when your flesh is leading you somewhere, but it's Satan's voice and God's voice. And those are the two polar opposites. And so what I tell people is pray over your hearing. Tell the enemy he is not allowed to minister to you. And what you will find is you will find that diminishing, your ability to hear him diminishing and your faith to hear God increasing and get in the word because Romans 10 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you, know, you, know, if you hear, you're going to have faith. time is slipping away. <laughs> I need you to pray those supernatural. How oh, would you like to, to pray, have Laura pray against insomnia, uh, pray for you to recall your dreams, pray for you to understand your dreams. She has a gifting from God to do this. Would you pray right oh, now? I would love to. I would love to. Father, I just pray in the powerful name of Jesus that you would touch every listener within the sound of my voice right now. Father, that you would bless their sleep, that you would make it sweet, that where they have laid down in the past and their minds have been troubled, that the Prince of Peace would rule there and reign there and that they would find sleep and stay asleep. Uh, all insomnia, all sleep apneas, we come against those in the name of Jesus. His name is powerful. And so we come against those and we ask you, God, for you to release sleep, sweet slumber over your children and over those who are watching. There are some who are watching and you've not been able to sleep and you don't know God. You don't know the Prince of Peace. And if you'll ask him into your heart right now and just say, come on in. Fill me, take all of my sin, take every spirit I'm troubled with and replace them with one spirit. I trade them for one spirit, the Holy Spirit. And as He comes in, you're going to notice, you're going to notice a difference in your sleep. You're going to notice a difference 
in your dreaming. Our time has slipped away, mm -hmm. but he gives his beloved sleep. Yes, he does. Laura Harris-Smith has received a download from heaven to demystify nighttime dreams and daytime visions, revealing the knowledge behind God communicating with us in the supernatural. Is it possible that God designed sleep so that we would be a totally captive audience to hear His voice clearly? Is that possible? Of course it is. Laura shows you how to unlock the answers so you can solve life's most pressing issues, even while you're sleeping, through your dreams and visions. Call now and get Laura Harris Smith's powerful book, Seeing the Voice of God, and her empowering DVD, 10 Frequently Asked Questions on Dreams and Visions, plus a revealing three-part audio CD teaching 2020 hearing. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9234. Through Laura's book and three-part audio CD teaching, you will learn how to hear God with your ears by day and your eyes at night. Discover an easy to understand six-step process for clearly seeing and hearing God's voice in your dreams and visions. Identify the cause and the cure for spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness. Learn how to understand your prophetic dreams by properly discerning the symbols by scanning Laura's dream dictionary, which includes over 1,000 symbols and their meanings. At the end of every chapter of her book, there are prayers of impartation to help release in your spirit the things you are learning. In Job 33, 14 through 16, uh, it says, Now God speaks in one way uh, and in another, but man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering in their beds, then he opens the ears of men. Through her two-part DVD, Laura provides answers to the top 10 frequently asked questions on the topic of dreams and visions. Some of the questions include, how do you know if a dream is from God? How can you be sure your dream interpretation is right? How can you increase having dreams? How do you get rid of nightmares? And so much more. I happen to believe where we are in history that God wants you to hear His voice more than you even want to hear His voice. And I believe that this material is a catalyst for you to be a hearer and a doer of God's Word. What more could you ask for? Don't miss out on getting Laura Harris-Smith's powerful book, Seeing the Voice of God, and her empowering DVD, 10 Frequently Asked Questions on Dreams and Visions, plus a revealing three-part audio CD teaching, 2020 Hearing. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9234. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9234 or log on to Sid Roth. Roth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest comes from a hopeless background, and he has supernaturally found how you can get rid of hopelessness in every area of your life. God said to him, your season of hopelessness is over. You want that? Yeah. I do. Get a little excited at home, too. <laughs>